Muhammad bin Ya'qub al-Kulayni, may Allah bless him, recorded in al-Kafi with his chain to Ali al-Uraydi, the son of Imam al-Ja'far alayhi salam, who narrates, Allah, who narrates from his brother Abu al-Hassan, Imam Musa al-Qazim alayhi salam, who has said the following, Fatima alayhi salam is a truthful and a martyr. The daughters of prophets do not experience menses. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Can we have a loud salawat in honor of Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam? Again, we would like to send our gratitude and thanks to Sheikh Nuru for accepting our invitation. And may Allah reward you for disseminating the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. Now, may I please invite Sheikh Nuru to the pulpit with a loud uh, Hedari Hedari Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad Salawat, salawat, salawat. Keep salawat, keep. Pine are I, pine to me, Sama Laknara, Hadri. Salawat, Allah, Muhammad, you are Ali Muhammad. For the purification. 
purification of our hearts and hastening of the reappearance of our beloved, the awaited Savior, Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Once again, mu'mineen and mu'minat, we thank Almighty Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, for gracing us with this wonderful moment to commemorate the painful departure or martyrdom of the beloved daughter of our beloved prophet, our beloved role model, Sayyida Fatima al Zahra, Al Mardiya al Zakiya, Salawatullahi wa Salamuhu alayha. Alhamdulillah, Mu'mineen and Mu'minat, we discussed the true love for Fatima al Zahra. And towards the end of our majlis last night, we looked at some very important practical tips or steps on how to establish true love for Fatima. As we mentioned last night, it's not just about mahabba, but it's about wilaya. And this wilaya is what the Holy Quran mentions as mawadda. It is not one-sided, but it is two-sided. You play your part, and then you benefit from the blessings of Ahl al-Bayt. You don't only benefit from the blessings of Ahl al-Bayt, and then you fold your arms and do nothing. So what is expected of each and every one of us as lovers and followers of this great lady is to keep playing our part in whatever way possible to practically demonstrate our love for the lady of light. The tradition I've just quoted, my dear brothers and sisters, is not a new tradition to all of us. It is a known tradition. I have no doubt in my mind we had this tradition so many times. But what is important about this tradition is that it has different dimensions. Mashallah. And a true lover of the Holy Prophet and Fatima alayhi salam will try his or her level best to appreciate most of the dimensions of this tradition. What's the tradition? It is from our beloved prophets. Fatima to Baba Atumini. Fatima is part of me. Allah's pleasure is connected with the pleasure of Fatima. In other words, Allah is pleased when Fatima is pleased. Allah is angry when Fatima alayhi is angry. In other words, the wrath or the anger of Almighty Allah is connected with that of Fatima to Sahara. Now, departing from this beautiful tradition, kindly, as usual, I seek your indulgence. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. And let's learn something deep from this beautiful tradition. My topic of tonight is as follows. Fatima, alayhi salam, the heart of the Holy Prophet. And the examination of tonight Insha'Allah will be of the following stages. The first stage, we will analyze into details the meaning of a bada'ah. Our bada'ah, as some may say. Fatima to bada'atum minni. Some will say Fatima to bada'atum minni. So first stage of the examination, let us unlock the secret of this terminology to appreciate what our beloved prophet is highlighting when he says, Fatima is part of me. 
Second stage of our examination, we will look at the last part of this tradition and analyze it also. Where the Holy Prophet mentioned, This Rid Allah, which is connected with the Rid of Fatima, and this Ghadab Allah, which is connected with Ghadab of Fatima, what is it? What is it that Allah's pleasure is connected with that of Fatima and Allah's anger is connected with that of Fatima? This is a very powerful tradition, my dear brothers and sisters. And then the last stage of our examination, as usual, I will provide Mu'minin and Mu'minat with some practical tips so that we take our way, that's our takeaway. Looking at the life of this great lady, what lessons I and you can practically take on board from tonight's discussion so that we can reflect and not only reflect but to seek to implement so that those practical lessons manifest in our lives and by so doing we are regarded by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala as true lovers and followers of Father. It's about being true lover. It's about being true follower. It's not following Fatima with lip service. It's following Fatima alayhi salam with actions. So let's look at the first stage of the examination. As I said, this tradition is deep. You know, scholars in mysticism, when they look at existence, wujud, you know, somebody who has wujud is called mawjud. Mawjud are of two types. We have a mawjud wasi' and we have a mawjud dayyak. We have this mawjud who is in existence, whose existence is encompassing, is massive. But then there is another existence whose existence is too narrow. What's the difference between the two? Kindly pay attention, they can't. The one whose existence is massive, if you look around, it becomes difficult to find the like of that one. Because his existence encompasses everything. Example of that is the existence of Allah. You know, Allah Quran says, Wa rahmati kulla shay. My mercy encompasses everything. Meaning what? Allah is everywhere. That is why it is impossible to find the like of Allah. Why? Because Allah is wase. But there are those who are so close to Allah who are complete manifestations of Allah. And on account of that, their wujud also become wasir. And these are the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wassalam. Mm. But when we say wujud dayyik, there are people whose existence is too narrow. Anyone whose existence is narrow, what happens? You will find the like of that person a lot. Like I and you, I'm not indispensable. You are not indispensable. If you are not here today, somebody else will be here. If I'm not here to decide, somebody else will decide. Why? Because my existence is a dayak. But exist, are you understand what I'm trying to say? The existence of Al Al Bayt is wasir. Therefore, to find the like of Al Al Bayt is close to impossibility. It's impossible. That's why we have the 12. And that's why we have the 40 Masumin. These are what we call Silsilatul Zahabiyat. These are the golden chains. In traditions, when you hear golden chains, referring to Hadith. From, say for example, you say hadith from Imam Zainal Abidin. 
Where did he get it from? From Imam Al Hussein. Where did he get it from? From Imam Al Hassan. Where did he get it from? From Imam Ali. Where did he get it from? From Rasulullah. Where did he get it from? From Allah. That's what we call it in Silat al Dabiya, like Imam Al Rada, alayhi salam. Now, let's look at the meaning of Bid'ah. Fatima to Bid'ah to Mindi. Fatima is part of me. It's when you look at Arul Bayt's relationship with the Holy Prophet, you realize that the Holy Prophet so many times, on so many occasions, discussed Ahlul Bayt. Now, I'll give you some examples to appreciate the meaning of a better art on the first level, meaning the first meaning. When it comes to Imam al Hussein, you all know very well. The Holy Prophet has a famous tradition. Highlighted on his relationship with Abba Abdullah al Hussein. What's the tradition? Who can tell me? Hussein of Mindi, Wa'ana, Jazakallah. It's a simple tradition. Hussein is from me, and I am from Hussein. If you look at Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet also discussed about them. Al Hassan wal Hussein imamani ama aw ka'ada. Hassan and Hussein are divine leaders, whether sitting or rising. Now, when you come to Amir al Mu'minin, so many traditions. One tradition, the Holy Prophet said, Ali yun minni wa ana min Ali. Ali is from me and I am from Ali. Another tradition tells us, Ana wa Ali yun min nurin I and Ali are from one light. But when it comes to Fatima, Prophet is not saying Fatima to minni wa ana min. He says what? Fatima to It's so profound. What does it mean, Bata to Minni? And what does it mean, Hussein no Minni wa Anamin Hussein? Ali no Minni wa Anamin Ali. When it comes to this hadith about Abba Abdullah and the Holy Prophet, and about Amir al Mumini and the Holy Prophet, Minni, Minni, it simply means Mushabahat and Musanaha. Mean what? There are similarities between the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali. And there are similarities between the Holy Prophet and Abba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. But when he says Fatima to Baba Atum Minni, you know, Baba simply means Kalb, heart. When he says Baba Atum Minni, you know what? Fatima is my heart. Fatima surah to lead. Meaning Fatima is my other form. Fatima is my replica. Fatima is my exact copy. That's why when he said Fatima to bother atom mini. In other words, it simply means ever Fatima you see in me, you will find it in Fatima. That is why, if you look at traditions describing this great lady, you will come across a tradition whereby we are told there is none who resembles prophets the way he walks, the way he will sit. And the way he would talk than his beloved daughter Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. So the first meaning of a better heart is what heart? Fatima is my heart. You break her heart, my heart is broken. You please the heart of Fatima, my heart is pleased. That's the first meaning. Take note of that. Let's go to the second meaning. Very more profound. Ya Rasulullah, you taught us Fatima is part of you and you are part of Fatima. What does it mean? 
It simply means there is one major role and this role is played by both the heart of Fatima and the heart of the Holy Prophet. Prophet. What is that role? <coughs> Can you think of any role? What do you think is a role or the role? Both the heart of the Holy Prophet and the heart of Fatima played. He said, Risalat, who? Oh. These two hearts contain the Quran. Fatima to Bada to Mini. Meaning, my heart and the heart of Fatima contained the Holy Quran. Let's explain it. First, with the heart of the prophets. You see, the heart of the Holy Prophet, what did it contain when it comes to the Holy Quran? It contained the revelation of the Holy Quran. They call it the heart of the Prophet, Mawtinu Tanzilin Quran. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala revealed the Holy Quran to the heart. No question. Kindly as I said, pay attention. It's very critical. It's very important. How many stages do we have when it comes to the existence of the Holy Quran? Do you know? Do you know how many stages do we have when it comes to the existence of the Holy Quran? Anyone, can anyone tell me? Three. three. I agree, three. Which is the first one? It's revealed. Uh -huh, second one? Second one is, is, is the five chosen people and the third one is the three chosen people. Master, you've done well, your guess is good, but only the first answer is right. Three. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the first stage to the existence of the Holy Quran is Lawhil Mahfuz. Protected tablet with God. Surah Al Waqi'ah, verses 77 and 78. Inna hu la Quran al Karim fi kitab maknun. It is indeed a generous Quran in a protected book. So the first existence to the Holy Quran is kitab maknun lo hi mahfuz. When Quran was with Allah, it was colorless. It had no language. It had no size. It were only realities of the Holy Quran. What is the second stage to the existence of the Holy Quran? It's the heart of the Holy Prophet. So from Allahi Mahfuz, Allah sent it to the heart of our beloved Prophet. That's why I said the role is the role of containing the Quran. When did our beloved prophet contain Quran? When the Holy Quran was sent down to him on the night of Qadr. That is why you look at chapter Shu'ara, verses 193 and 194. Allah says, Nazala bihi ala qalbika min al mubi. Yani Jibra'il brought it down to your heart in a plain Arabic language. And there are so many verses you know in Quran where Allah talks of this second stage. What is the second stage? Learn it, brothers and sisters. It is the heart of the Holy Prophet. Inna anzalna wa fi laylatil. Together, inna anzalna fi laylatil. Aha, that's the second stage. We reveal the edge. What? The entire Quran from Fatiha to Nas on the night of Qadr where? In the heart of the Holy Prophet. You look at chapter Dukhan, verse 3. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatim mubarakah. 
We reveal the end on a blessed night. So the point I'm trying to make, kindly follow me, please don't get confused. That Quran has three stages to its existence. First one, with Allah, Allah, I'm repeating. Second one is where? The heart of our beloved prophet. What is the next stage when it comes to the existence of the Holy Quran? Can someone tell me? If you don't know, no problem. Ahl al Bayt, uh huh? Bibi Fatima. Any other response? Imam Ali. Mouth. These are all right. But the correct answer is Makkah and Medina. 23 years. Chapter Esra, Quran 17, verse 106. وقرآنا فركناه لتقرأه على مقف ونزلناه تنزيلا. This Quran we reveal it to you so that you recite it in portion slowly but surely, and we reveal it to you with a thorough revelation. Meaning what? Twenty three years, Makki and Madani. Something would happen, and Allah will reveal it. If you look at Surah Al-Qiyamah, verse 16, Allah says to Prophet, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآن Prophet loved Quran. He wanted to recite in a hurry. Allah said, don't recite in a hurry. We will slowly but surely send all to you. So the heart of our beloved Prophet has one thing in common with the heart of Fatima. What is that in common? Both hearts contain Quran. Prophet contain revelation of the Quran. Now question, what did the heart of Fatima contain when it comes to Quran? Can anyone tell me? Don't worry if you don't know, it's not a problem, don't worry. This might be new to some of you, but don't worry. It's very important to learn, I want you to learn. Every night you come, please, if you don't learn something new, come talk to me. I will not be happy if I don't give you something new. So please, if anything you feel, please reach out to me. We are all here to learn. I'm still a house student. <coughs> what did the heart of Sayyidah Fatima do when it comes to Quran? Protection. Protection. Any other? Memorize. Memorization. Any other? Worship. Worship. Any other? Good, I mean, good, good attempt. Explanation. Explanation. Good attempt. So we said, the heart of the prophet is Mautinu Tanzil Quran. But what is the heart of Fatima? Mautinu Ta'wil Quran. <laughs> prophet contained revelation. Makkah Madina, Laylatul Qadr. Heart of Fatima contained the secret of the Holy Quran. We don't say this just for saying see. We have proofs for this. This is the proof. And kindly understand and appreciate it, brothers and sisters. Say the Fatima lost their father. They were so close. And tomorrow I will, I will, I will highlight on this in the details, inshallah. They were so close, glue. Glue. He wouldn't eat without Fatima. He wouldn't sleep without Fatima. If I'm going to the mosque, he will pass by the house of Fatima. So when Prophet left this world, it was a real pain for Fatima. Especially when someone looked at Prophet and said to Prophet, you are hallucinating. Like saying to the Prophet, you are a mad person. So it was a pain for Fatima. So Fatima would cry. Fatima would lament. Until people went to Amir al Mu'minin and said to him, her voice is coming a lot. Imam Ali built a place by Tul Ghusun. You mentioned on the first night. But this is the point of that heart of the Fatima which contained. The secret of the Holy Quran. And this is a beautiful tradition from Imam Ja'far al-Swalik sallallahu wa sallam wa alayhi wa While Sayyidah was mourning her beloved father, she was 
in grief. She was in pain. She was crying. And of course, the father told her, you will be the first person to join me. Before he left, Fatima was sad. And at the same time, she was happy. Why sad? Because she's losing her father. Why happy? Because the father said, Fatima, amongst my family, you join me. Some said after three months, some said after six months. So that made her happy that I will join my father. But she will mourn the father. Narration says, Allah sent Jibra'il to Fatima. Somebody tells me, how is that possible? I said, it's more than possible. Fatima is higher than Maryam. But Maryam received the angels. If Maryam received the angels, cannot receive angels. Wow. <laughs> this is our traditions. Ya Maryam, inna Allah, you bashirut. Allah sent the angels to Maryam to give her good news of having a child. So Fatima also angels, while she was mourning her beloved father, would come to her. Appreciate this great lady, my dear brothers and sisters. What would the angel do? They would console Fatima, but not only consoling her, but bringing from Allah the secret of the Holy Quran to her. Uh -huh. Ta'wil Quran. Imam Jafar, what he said? وَإِنَّ عِنْدَنَا لَمُصْحَفِ فَاطِمَةً He said, with us is the Mus'haf of, of Fatima. What is this Mus'haf of Fatima? It's the secret of the Holy Quran, which was brought to Fatima by Jibra'il after the departure of our beloved Prophet from this world. Then you know Imam Jafar what he said? He said, this Mus'haf is not Quran, but it's the secret. He said, the secret of Quran is in this Mus'haf of Fatima. And Prophet tells us, Inna lil Quran is sabi'een batna, wa lil ayah zahran wa batna. He said, each and every ayah of the Holy Quran has inner parts and outer parts. And Prophet said, the entire Quran has 70 inner parts. You know what tradition Amir Mumini said? Each and every ayah has seven in a part. You only know the surface, you don't know the rest. That's why Ali said, Saluni kabla antafkiduni. Ask me before you lose me. Ask me before you lose me. So Fatima alayhi salam, she received the secret of the Holy Quran. And this secret is with Abba Salih al-Mahdi. Imam al-Zaman is having it. Like the way he's having the stick of Musa. Like the way he's having all the signs of the prophets who became before them. Mus'haf of Fatima is with Imam Sahib al-Asr. When he reappears, he will come with Mus'haf of Fatima. But something very interesting, brothers and sisters. Look at this. You know, when Jibra'il would go to Fatima, what would she do afterwards? She would then inform Amir al muminin So that is why in our tradition, Fatima alayhi salam is the teacher of Imam Ali when it comes to the Taqwil al Quran. <laughs> Somebody said, but how? Amir al muminin is higher than Fatima. It's true. Imam Ali is way higher than Fatima. But sometimes, Mafdul teaches Afdal. <laughs> Look at Musa and Hidr. Musa is Afdal min Hidr, but Hidr taught Musa alayhi salam. <laughs> Look at Abba Abdullah alayhi salam. And Amir al Mumin. Amir al is higher than Abba Abdullah. But there has not been an Imam who led an uprising way higher, more complex than that of Abba Abdullah, you know, Sayyid. So sometimes Mafdul has to learn from Afdal. So Fatima is the teacher of the entire Ahlul Bayt when it comes to the secret of the Holy Quran. So that is why the narration you mentioned first night, Imam Asal Askari tells us, he teaches us beautifully, we the Ahlul Bayt, we are the Hujjah, the proofs of Allah over you. But our mother Fatima, Salamullah alayha, she is the proof of Allah over us, Ahlul Bayt. Ah, 
Let him look at myself. Do I tick all the boxes? Fatima, tick, 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 tick. Then go sleep. Allah is happy with you. Fatima is the yardstick to measure whether you are a true believer or not. That is why when she is angry with you, forget it. Allah will always be angry with you. And when Fatima is happy, go sleep, I said. Go sleep, chill. Allah is happy. So this makam is a big makam, Habibi. It's not a small makam. It's not a small manzal. This has a strong mystical connotation. We need to have that divine spark and test. <laughs> you need to toe the line of Fatima. All this bring me to the last thing of the examination. Practical tips. We've spoken a lot on this tradition. Now, what practical lessons do we take? Every night I have to give you practical lessons. Something we need to go and reflect. I'm going to share four occasions in the life of Fatima. You may know two of them or even three. But there are some lessons I want us to extract as a takeaway for tonight. And then we'll continue the discussion tomorrow if we remain alive. The first one is from Ilal al-Shah, volume 1, page 182. It's a known tradition, you all know this tradition. It's not a new thing. Who narrates it? Her beloved son, Imam Asim al-Mushtaba. Salamullahi alayhi He said, my mother, would wake up in the middle of the night. My mother would pray until Fajr. One narration says, until after Fajr. So one night, I heard my mom praying. You know the tradition, all of you. What was she praying? She was praying for her neighbors. After that, I asked my mom, I heard you praying for neighbors. Why not us? Of course, Imam knew. They are teaching us. Yeah. What was the response? Al-Jahu Fatima said to your beloved son, neighbor first before home. <laughs> Practical lesson we all have today. <sighs> Be a good neighbor. Don't become a headache for your neighbors, whether Muslims or not Muslims. Yeah. Where you live and where you work. If you are a true Shia of Fatima, you are always a source of blessings for whoever interacts with you. Whether they are Muslims or not Muslims. Second lesson we learn from here, I mentioned last night, Salat. Fatima salam would wake up in the darkness of the night and she would call Allah, 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 Allah. She would make a ibadah and dua. You as a lover of Fatima, you cannot settle but to ensure that your Salat is up to date. Otherwise, you will be deprived of the Shafa of Fatima on the day of prayer. Oh. That's what we learn from this. Look at her beloved daughter, Sayyidina Zainab Ali Asalam. She learned from the mother, isn't it? 
They said, when have you known Zainab when she is not in her mihrab? That's why they call Zainab mihrab ul ishq. She left from her father. Abu Abdullah alayhi salam looked at Zainab on the eve of Ashura. He said to her, oh my beloved sister Zainab, when you wake up at night to pray, remember me in your dua. When you make nawafil optional prayers, oh Zainab, make dua for me. So from this tradition, what do we learn? We learn that salat is crucial, and number two, that salat must be translated into good akhlaq and behavior. Yeah. That's one lesson. Let's look at the second lesson. Second lesson is from Biharul Anwar. Volume 43, page 89. What's the tradition? <coughs> you know, prophets and Fatima, as I said, they were glue. Like glue. Every trip, he would come back, first person to talk to would be Fatima. So at one point, he and Amir Wayne traveled. Listen to this uh, story, it's very beautiful. I love it. And Fatima salam, was waiting for their return. So she dressed nicely, waiting for them, earrings, everything. They came back. But when they came back, she saw her father wasn't that happy. Fatima understood her father. Of course, he then went to the member. When he went to the member, of course, ladies were on their side. You know what she did? This is the lesson. Look at the lesson, what we need and what we not. As he said, what she removed the earrings, she removed part of the clothes, and she called someone, said, take it to my father, give it to him, this is my fee, sabili, love for Islam. <laughs> you know what Rasulullah received it, you know what he says? Fidaki abuki, fidaki abuki, fidaki abuki. Three times he mentioned, oh Fatima, may your father be sacrificed for you. May your father be sacrificed for you. May your father be sacrificed for you. What do you get from this? Allah, whatever you have, give in the way of Ahl al You will not lose, I promise you. Some of you know my story. If I tell you my story, how I became a Shia, it's a testimony. If you give in the way of Ali Muhammad, you will always remain victorious in your life. Keep this majalis alive. Donate towards this. Giving life to the affairs of Ahlul Bayt. Prophet said, Fatima, I am sacrificed for you. The entire world is saying, Prophet, we are sacrificed for you. But the Holy Prophet said, Fatima, I am sacrificed for you. It's like Karbala, Abba Abdullah. He's saying what? Abbas, Abbas, Abbas. But all of us are saying, Hussein, Hussein, Hussein. This is the maqam of Fatima. What lesson do we learn? Give in the way of Allah. Third one is in a book, Manakim. Le Ali Abi Talib. It's a beautiful book. The Holy Prophet came to the house of Fatima. He saw her breastfeeding the baby. But at the same time, she was grinding something to eat. Allah Akbar. You know what Prophet said? Ta'ajjali mararat al-dunya halawat al-akhirah. He said, oh my beloved daughter, this pain of the dunya you are going through, you will definitely get the pleasure of akhirah. That's why in mysticism, it is said, min If you want a divine permanent taste, you need to ignore temporary yes. taste. Yes. Why did you all come to Majlis? Good number. Why? You ignore temporary tastes. So this one is going to give you permanent taste. You are enjoying. Chilling, chatting, 
but you leave everything, you are ignoring temporary tests, going to Allah, which will grant you a return permanent test. So Rasulullah said to Fatima, this will grant you permanent test. You know what he said? Alhamdulillahi ala na'amaihi wa shukru ala alaihi. Instead, Fatima said, I thank Allah for my condition. It's not about sabr. Fatima moved from marhala to sabr ila marhala to shukr. She thank Allah for her situation. That is why Allah revealed ayah. Wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. Surah al-Duha verse 5. Said Rasulullah, Allah is going to give you something and you'll be happy. What is that? Inna a'atayna al-Kawthar. Ba 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 ba. Ya Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah. What do we get here from Bryce? Every situation you find yourselves, be pleased with Allah. Some are sick. Could be cancer, could be any disease. Some have social problems, marital issues, children. Some have financial issues, especially in this day and age. There is no human being without problem. If you don't have a problem, you are not human being. Then you are somebody, and you are from different Osman. Yeah. You don't belong to this Zami. Everybody has trouble. But why do we love our right? So that when we are in trouble, we remember the are trouble. <laughs> so we learn from Fatima. Last point. Allah Akbar. You know, Allah revealed the verse to Prophet, two verses in fact. Chapter Hijrah, verses 43 and 44. It's about Jahannam. So when Prophet received this verse, he wasn't happy. Obviously, not because of the laws, but because his, some of his companions, the way they were behaving. And they knew there was only one person or two. If Prophet would see them, he would smile. That is Imam Ali and Fatima. So some of the companions rushed to the house to inform Fatima. Allah Akbar. When they came to Fatima, she was reciting. Whatever with Allah is the best and is permanent. So they inform her. This is the point, and then we do Masabi. Allahu Akbar. May Allah give us the love of Fatima. May Allah make us appreciate the love of Fatima. Allah, the love of Fatima, never complain. Never complain. You know, when they inform her, she put on her dress. Suleiman al Faris, he saw her coming. He began to cry. You know what? There were 12 stitches on the cloth. Kohne. Old. 12 stitches. Different places. Suleiman cried. Suleiman said, Look at those. Who do not want to believe in Allah? They are in castles and mansions. Salman went to the Holy Prophet. Fatima. The Holy Prophet said, Fatima is of the highest level. He said, Mali ahl al bayt wa dunya. Ahl al bayt are not for dunya. Khuni kuni al akhira. They are created for Akhira, and dunya is created for them. Oh. But here, what is the God? God is my dear brothers and sisters. Be pleased with your situation. You are better than billions. Be pleased be happy. Thank Allah for every situation you find yourself. Has anyone slapped your mother? Aye. Think about it. Who slapped your mother's face? <laughs> Who beat your mother's arm? <laughs> what 
to be slapped, Fatima. <laughs> Hassan on the right. Hussein on the left. Fatima coming back home from delivering the khutbah of Fadaqiyya. The enemy appeared from behind and he slapped on the right eye of Fatima. The eye turned red. Imam al Hassan would always say in Medina, whenever I would see this man, I would remember how the eye of my mom turned red. Allahu Akbar. You know, this remind me, isn't it, of the martyrdom of Abu Fadl al Abbas, alayhi salam? Isn't it the enemy struck the arrow to the right eye of Abbas? And when Abu Abdullah got to the body of Abbas, Abbas called out, Oh, my Mawla Hussein, when I was born, I only opened my eye when you held me. But here I am dying. Next to you, I cannot open my eye. Hence, Mu'mineen, Mu'minat, lovers and followers of Ahl al-Bayt, picture the scene. When Amir al-Mu'mineen was in the ghusl of Fatima, he would see that eye of Fatima. The Fatima was close to her beloved mom, Khadija, isn't it? She had one request. She said, oh, Fatima, Khadija said to Fatima, go tell your father and humbly ask him. <laughs> when I die, he should bury me with the clothes he always put on when Wahai comes. <laughs> Rasulullah said, Fatima, Allah built a place for your mom in Jannah. But she said, yes, I want him to clothe me and cover me with this. Uh, Allah Akbar, when Bibi Khadija left this world, and you know the young Fatima would saw her mother vomiting blood. Because at Shabi Abi Talib, they would give them grass to eat. Khadija would vomit blood until Khadija left this world. The Holy Prophet then came to cover the wife. He brought the clothes which Khadija requested. And the cloth was too small for Khadija. The Holy Prophet raised up his hand. He made dua, Ya Allah. I am your Prophet Rahmatan lil alameen. This is my beloved wife Khadija. Who gave everything for Islam. I have no kafan for my wife. Now you should tell us. Us. Allah sent Jibra'il with five kafans. <laughs> Rasulullah asked, Who are these kafans for? He said, The first kafan is for you, Rasulullah. <laughs> Who the second kafan is? He said, Use the second kafan for Khadija. <laughs> One of the said, The first kafan for Khadija, second kafan for you, Rasulullah. He asked Jibra'il, The third kafan? <laughs> Allah said the third kafan is for Fatima. <laughs> Fourth kafan? Fourth kafan is for Shaheed al Mihrab al Masjid al Kufa. <laughs> it's for Amir al Mu'mineen. He said the fifth kafan. He said the fifth kafan is for Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. And of course, you know Imam Hassan, after they poison him, they struck the arrows of his body. <laughs> Abu Abdullah came to bury Imam al Hassan. He had to remove so many arrows from the body. Uh, Rasulullah asked Jibra'il, Where is the kafan for Hussein? Where is the kafan for Hussein? Jibra'il said, Because Hussein will be slaughtered like a sheep. Because of Hussein, Allah, <laughs> <laughs>